Father, bless him. Bless his son, God, who can give you. The hand of the Lord restore upon him. Give him the best job of our four hundred and last fellows. And soon he shall join. Developments they need in their finances, they shall be able to obtain. Those who are waiting for greater finances, they shall receive it to commit themselves into business, to commit in themselves into investment, to commit themselves into utilization. So they shall be prosperous and their generation shall be blessed. Give everybody increase in their jobs, increase in their bonuses, increase in their finances, increase in their savings, and they shall have good riches, blessed riches. Miracle financial blessings of God shall come to them. Their accounts shall have more savings, and you shall miraculously help them and bless them. And all expenditures shall be stopped, and they shall be able to see the increase of God. They shall have their storehouses full and plenty, nothing to lack in their generation. In Jesus' almighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. This day is the first day of the fasting. You can fast according to your situation. I do always. Like you know, in the afternoon I start before one o'clock, so from one onwards I start calculating. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So around my fasting becomes like that, eight to nine hours. Generally four hours, six hours, eight hours. You can decide, and accordingly also you can do it. Tomorrow is the night vigil in our church here. At night ten o'clock we are starting our night vigil, and when you start at ten o'clock. You can prepare yourself to fast accordingly, so that you can have something in the morning, afternoon also. At night, you can start fasting to complete six hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours according to your capacity. I always calculate these hours of prayers, worship, around two to three hours for myself because I'm praying for people afterwards, and then we are putting the things and then going back. So my calculation comes like that from the afternoon. And like that, I prepare myself. You also can prepare fast so that you shall be able to receive the breakthrough bless of God in your life. And tonight, I want to declare the blessings of God that these three days, that is today, Wednesday, is the first day. Tomorrow is the second day, Thursday, online prayer will be there starting at 10 o'clock in the same hall. Then on Friday, we'll be completing our third days of fast. You need not to fast from morning, fast from afternoon so that it shall complete at 8 o'clock. So calculate according to that. If you start at one o'clock, complete. Stop eating from one o'clock. So two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So seven hours you complete your fast. Okay. If you want to have six hours, you eat up to three o'clock and then stop eating. Whatever it may be, you arrange your timings and do it always. This timing of worship should be included so that your timing becomes six hours, eight hours. Four hours, whatever hours you decide, and do it everything unto the Lord. You will surely be blessed. Don't neglect. Don't neglect. Don't think because somebody is telling me to eat, I eat. Somebody is telling me to come on, eat together, and I complete my fast with them. No, do something for the glory of God, and you will be surely blessed. Today I start the message of God. Today's message is very important. This message only can revive you and revive me. Nothing can bring knowledge and understanding to you. Nobody can give knowledge and understanding. Nobody can give wisdom of the word of God. Nobody can give you knowledge of the word of God. With your own wisdom and own knowledge, you'll be failure. There are many good testimonies that I have about the sons of God, those who studied themselves. They have biblical knowledge, so much of knowledge, but yet there are so many other things they are lacking. Though the gifts of God is mentioned in the book of the Bible, the fruits of the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Gifts of the Holy Spirit is mentioned. They know the Bible from page one to last page. They know the book of the Bible. 
they also know from the book to book or cover page to the last page all the books of the bible they explain so very well but some of the gifts are not operating through them you cannot see the gifts of god operating through them because this is their knowledge that they have by studies they have got the knowledge but the power is given by god and that power does not come to you and me unless and until you decide yourself to receive the power from the most high and how to receive the power by the third person of the trinity that is called the holy spirit the holy spirit gives you the power the holy spirit gives you the understanding the holy spirit gives you the knowledge the holy spirit makes you to understand the scriptures the holy spirit gives you the desire to read the scriptures this scripture does not belong to any denomination again and again i want to tell you this scripture does not belong to any denomination this belongs to god and to the people those who love the word of god by the loving of the word of god your mind and your heart your body should be totally changed many people by reading the word of god they have received their healing when they were on the sick bed many mighty men of god those are preachers they have a great testimony about their healing and after that god started using them with the powerful healing ministry in their life the reason because of the word of god and tonight also as we are going to read the scriptures and we are going to understand how i can develop myself how i can have the understanding of god how i can have the knowledge of god how i can be powerful how my prayers can bring the victory how my prayers can bring the healing how my prayers can bring the result of god and there is only one source and that is the source of the holy spirit nothing else you may know the god the father you may know god the son jesus christ but if you are without the holy spirit of god you are actually without power you are not an empty vessel you know god the father you have received jesus christ as your lord and savior but you are not believing in the holy spirit of god you become powerless man powerless woman when you believe in the power of the holy spirit you become a different man because that is the third person of the holy spirit that is same like god the father same like god the son jesus christ same the holy spirit and that gives you power power to speak the word power to pray power to deliver the people from their sicknesses healing and automatically so many things happen when you have that power we are filled with the holy spirit of god after we took the water baptism the holy spirit of god has come upon us the holy spirit of god has filled us we have buried our old nature but exactly what has happened that power has not increased therefore today is this three days of fast will help you to revive the holy spirit of god that is in you the holy spirit that is in you will revive you <clears throat> or god will help you to revive the holy spirit of god that is in you when it is revived it becomes activated when your mobile battery is dead what you do you go back and charge that that is required in a materialistic way and when you put it into connection with the electricity it charge it gets charged you can see the words you can see the pictures you can see the youtube program you can see all that you want to see on the twitter on the facebook on the youtube your messages you can call somebody else because it is charged it starts working similar way when you receive the power of the holy ghost you start working in a different manner your prayers are heard very powerful your healings are come to the people people are getting comforted when they hear you talking people are getting astonished when you give them the word of god they when they hear or read they feel that something is happening to their bodies and all this is happening because of the third person of the trinity the holy spirit you have the holy spirit of god but in these three days you must revive the holy spirit that is in you revival brings changes if the change does not come i'm giving you the simple example of a normal electronic things of our gadgets like laptops like ipads ipods so also our mobiles different type of mobiles unless and until it is charged you cannot operate that you cannot do the operation though it is your mobile you hold it it's a brand new but it's not charged you cannot operate it similar way your life you are a child of god you are a daughter of god you know the word of god you have accepted jesus you also have the holy spirit but it is not revived it is not charged it cannot operate in you he cannot operate in you the holy spirit of god cannot operate in you because you are not charged to get charged you have to have the word of god you have to understand what exactly i lack in my life the holy spirit of god is there but the power is required and therefore you must know that this is given by god alone bible clearly says i'm going to get back to you 
with the Old Testament, always I do that. So that you shall be able to understand why those mighty men were used by God. Why God was using those mighty men. And what was there in them. When God called them and charged them, they were charged by the Holy Spirit of God. What happened? They used that charge to deliver the people, talk to people, do the miracles, signs and wonders. It was not without that. Without that, they were known men. By their names, they were known. But at the same time, understand what exactly happened. When they were empowered, their life was changed. What was that empowering spirit in them? The Holy Ghost power. God put the power of God in them. God charged them, and their life was totally changed. They started activating themselves with the power of God. They started speaking signs and wonders that this will happen, and it used to happen. They used to look unto the sky, and the dust used to come. They used to say to the pharaohs and the kingdom of you know, Egypt that this should happen in Egypt. It happened. Water should turn into the blood. It happened. The storm should come. It happened. All the cattle should die. Yes, it happened. Even the death of the firstborn, it happened. How it happened? Because the power of God started working through them, in them, and working through them, and they were actually revived by that power. Tonight, that power of God, of the Holy Spirit is required for you. The Holy Spirit power is required. Therefore, these three days of fasting and prayer is the subject, revive us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit, but then afterwards, I have mentioned one important word, if you remember. Huh? Okay, then. Revive us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and fire. The power is charged with the word of God. But when you have a fire, nothing will stand before you. I experienced this in the water baptism. When I give the water baptism to the people, water will be very cold when I'm entering. When I start giving water baptism, the pool and the entire surrounding area becomes hot. Sometimes specific sister or brother will come to dip herself in the water baptism. And when I'm dipping them, when they come up, oh, they will feel totally warm feeling all around that. Many times I was asking God, God, show us the angels, because angels of God is there all the time at the water baptism pool, because God gave the word, the angels will come and stir the water, and whoever gets into the water shall be healed. So show us the angel. Till today I have not seen, but one of the brothers long time ago, he had said that I felt angels there. I felt angels there in the water baptism pool. But I am praying to the Lord, Lord, you show me the angels so that I shall be able to see the angels. And tonight, I want to tell you the similar desire you must have. Lord, fill me with the power of God. Revive me with the Holy Spirit and revive me with the fire. The Holy Spirit of God, when it is revived in your life, it shall be a different type of, you know, atmosphere in your life. Why I have taken this subject of fire? Because this fire even burns in our bodies to destroy the weak nature that is in me and in us. The fire of the Holy Ghost will destroy the works of pride, arrogant nature, evil nature, hatred. Oh, yes, I am educated. I am like that. Only I can preach. All the type of unwanted, rude, and arrogance nature will disappear. Arrogance talk towards own family members. Arrogance talk in the family or in the, in the society or in the church. All the drive, that type of nature disappears. Humbleness comes. Simplicity comes. And the love of God increases. Passion of God increases. All this is mentioned in the book of the Bible. And tonight you have to revive yourself. I'm just introducing myself with the subject that we have taken for three days of fasting. That is, revive us, Lord. Revive us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Coming back to the word of God, the Bible clearly says, in the Old Testament, whomever God chose Already, whenever God chose them, their names were different. Suppose Abraham, forget about Abraham, Musa, Moses' name. When God called him, God called him, today onwards you will be called Moses. A man who was found in the water and will do many more signs and wonders of water. No doubt he divided the Red Sea. And the dividing of the Red Sea was nothing else but with the power of God. He himself used the power of God when he asked God, God, what shall I do? We are at the end of the day. 
God used that power through him to divide the Red Sea because he is the creator of the seas and oceans. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created oceans and seas and divided the earth from the sea and the earth was separate and the water was separated. Oceans and earth was created and this is what God was saying. And therefore, God was able to give that authority or give that power to Moses who was able to divide the Red Sea. Not a joke. Not a joke. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when he was on the earth, he walked on the water. He walked on the sea. He looked at the, uh, you know, he looked at the boisterous wind and he calmed the wind and the boisterous sea. But at the same time, when you see, look at Moses, Moses divided the Red Sea. Divided the Red Sea. And this was the power of God. And therefore tonight, you must be able to understand Reviving the Holy Spirit of God, you must receive something in your life. Either your prayer life shall be changed, word of God shall be reminded in your mind, your heart shall always desire for the Holy Spirit of God more and more, you shall work with signs and wonders, you shall have also casting out demons and healing the sick and raising the dead. It, dead should not be dead practically or dead totally physically, no. Dead can be even in sin. Dead can be even alive physically, but spiritually dead. All that should happen to you, and it should have begin in your own family. It should begin in my own family, in your own family. So tonight's message is, revive us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Coming back to this message, the Bible clearly says, Holy Spirit is concerned with so many other things. Holy Spirit also is a rain, water, Due. Holy Spirit of God is also, the, the Bible clearly says, the word of God when it is given to you. You are not reading the word, but suddenly you give the word of God to somebody by the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says, the Holy Spirit of God also gives you a rushing wind. On the day of Pentecost, when all the disciples were gathered to pray and to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord after the resurrection, the Bible clearly says, they came a rushing wind. And when the rushing wind came, they felt that rushing wind. They felt something moving. They felt something happening in their bodies. And this happened because of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible clearly says, and you and I must be able to remember when Jesus took the water baptism through John the Baptist, what had happened there? What had happened there? When the Lord Jesus took the full emotion of water baptism, went down to the water, came up from the water, and the Bible says, the Holy Spirit of God represented upon him like a dove, physical dove. Literally, dove came down. Dove represents the Holy Spirit. Bible also says oil. Many times you will feel your hands are oil, oily, or your fingers are oily, or you feel oil over your body all over. Suddenly, shining will come on your face and entire body. You will be anointed by the Holy Spirit oil. The Bible also says the rain, Water, dew, wind, dove, and now I want to represent one important thing that is called the fire. Very, very important that you should be able to understand about the fire. Come back to the scriptures. The scripture says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Holy Spirit referred as a fire. You must know about the Holy Spirit. You must desire the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible clearly says, I will just give you the simple, some scriptures I will just repeat for you so you shall be able to understand. When Jesus was on the earth and when he was resurrected from the grave, the Bible says Jesus appeared unto the disciples in a locked room. Not only that, Jesus also went and talked to many people. In Gospel of St. John chapter 14, please. 14, verse 16 and 17. The Bible clearly says, the word of God clearly says, John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Bible clearly says, Jesus told unto his disciples that I go to my Father. Remember, remember, I'm going to my Father now. And when I go to my Father, I will send you the comforter. In another Bible, it is said, I will send you the paraclete. 
In another Bible, I will send you the Holy Spirit. In another Bible, it says, I will send you the Holy Ghost. In another one, it says, I will give you that Spirit of God. So all this means nothing else but the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was telling his disciples, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit abides in you forever. Many people are not Christians. Many are not born again in the water. Many are not taken the full emotion of water baptism, but they know what is good and what is bad. They know what is good and what is evil. They know what is righteous and what is unrighteous. They know what is holy and what is unholy. They know what to touch and what not to touch. They know what to taste and what not to taste. Even in the world, the people say, don't lie. Any matter of religion, maybe. All type of religion, people, maybe. You'll be hearing from everyone, don't speak lies. Don't rob. Don't fight. Don't give bad words. These are all normal things. No, not normal. This speaks about the righteousness and holiness of God. This speaks about the holiness and the righteousness of God. This speaks about unholiness habit of our lives and unholy habits of our life and physical realm and in so many other ways. Similar way, the Bible said that they say it's a conscious. Sometimes they say inner man. No, by the birth that God gives them the Holy Spirit. And man lives in these three type of spirits. Number one, human spirit. Number two, godly spirit. And then the third one takes place called evil spirit. Therefore, man is always sometimes, sometimes very rude man, but suddenly they'll become soft. But sometimes the mean man or woman, they will go and confess to one another and repent. That is the godly spirit tells you to repent. Sometimes you don't want to do anything good to any man, any woman, always doing wrong thing, robbing, stealing, fighting, all that is evil spirit. That man is not in his senses. We say that he is not in his senses. He always fights with me. And that fight is not from him, from evil spirit. So man has this type of living nature. And therefore God said to the disciples that I go to my father and I will send you the comforter. comforter. After that in verse 17, Jesus said, even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. World cannot understand the spirit of truth. World cannot understand if anybody hits you here, you have to show another cheek and say, okay, hit me here also. World cannot understand. But God says, you will understand. God says, you will understand. You will understand because the spirit of God is in you. What is that? It means you understand forgiveness is very important. They may say so many things to you and they will give all manner of bad words and they will accuse you. But the Bible says you will never tell them anything. They do not know, the world do not know, but you know that you have to forgive others. The world thinks it's very good to rob others, to sin with somebody's wife and husband, to do something wrong with some other lady and man. The world says it's okay, time pass, it's okay, kar sakta hai. But the Bible says no. The one who has the Spirit of God in him, he will say, never touch, never do this, never talk like that, never look at them, never imagine about them, or never do any harm unto them. This is nothing else but the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible clearly says, the world will not understand this truth. The world will not know about this truth. But the Bible says, Jesus said, even the Spirit of the truth whom the world cannot understand. World cannot receive, world cannot understand, world cannot receive, but because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. Who is this him? He does not, they don't know the Holy Spirit, they don't understand about the Holy Spirit, neither they know him or seen him. But the Bible clearly says, but you know him. How you know him? Because you have read the word of God. The word of God tells you there is a Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit delivers you. Holy Spirit heals you. Holy Spirit gives you the wisdom. Holy Spirit holds you to not to sin. Holy Spirit does not make you to sin and continue in sin. Holy Spirit of God tells you, you have done wrong, repent. You have spoken wrong, repent. Holy Spirit of God tells you and tells me also. 
That's why whenever we come here, we repent and we ask God to forgive because we know that we are not supposed to sin, but yet I sin. Also we sin. And when we sin and I sin, what exactly we, have to, we are supposed to do? The whole of God is telling you, you have sinned yesterday. You have done wrong thing yesterday. So this is the best way that when you come in the presence of God, nobody will repent. World will not repent. World will say, I am done right. He gave me bad word, I gave him a bad word. He looked at me and I asked him, who are you to look at me? I correctly gave him, but you will not. He will say, no, I did wrong. And that conviction only will come when you give importance to the Holy Spirit of God. And therefore the Bible says, the world does not know him, but you know him. Why? For, For he, he dwelleth with you. He dwelleth with you in you. He is dwelling in you, with you. The reason he is dwelling in you, with you, only because of one important reason. And that reason is you have taken the full invention of water baptism and the whole of God started living in you. Before you were saying this is good and this is bad. But when you took the full emotion of water baptism, the Holy Spirit of God started living in you. You started controlling your body. You started controlling your tongue. You started controlling your eyes. You started watching only good things. You are not accepting bad things to watch, talk, and do. Why? Because now the Holy Spirit of God is living in you. He is controlling you. He is nobody else but the third person of the Trinity. He is guiding you. He is leading you. He is helping you. He is overtaking your flesh because this flesh is weak of mine and yours. This flesh tells you always to do the things of the world. But the Holy Spirit of God does not allow that one to do. Temptation to drink, temptation to smoke, temptation to lust, temptation to you know, you know, sexual immoralities, temptation, temptation, temptation in so many other ways. Temptation to fight, temptation to get angry, temptation to have jealousy, hatred, all that thing does not work out. Why? Because you are changed man and woman because of the Holy Spirit of God in you. And today, therefore, you have received the Holy Spirit of God, but these weaknesses are there. These weaknesses are there in me. These weaknesses are there in you. So how you can overcome? Only by revival. Only by reviving your life by the Holy Spirit of God. You can overcome temptation. You can overcome evil nature. You can overcome bad attitude. You can overcome your anger. You can overcome your doubts. You can overcome not accepting the word of God. All those things you can overcome. Therefore the Bible clearly says, the world does not know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Everyone, those who have taken the word of baptism, 100% you have the Holy Spirit of God in you. Amen. And Holy Spirit of God is telling you every time, this is not right, don't do it. This is not correct, don't talk it. This is to do that you have to forgive others. Others do not know, but you know it. If you know, and if you don't do it, it's your mistake, it's your wrong. And therefore, the Bible says, Jesus was teaching this about the Holy Spirit of God and referring to many people. Jesus also said in John chapter 14, Verse 25 and 26. John chapter 14, verse 25, 26. And later, John chapter 15, 25 and 26. Both the things are very important. Come back to John chapter 14, 25, 26. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Jesus said, I was present with you. And when I was present, I spoke to you. What did he speak? Come back to verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. The Bible clearly says Jesus was explaining to his disciples that when I was with you, I was explaining. I was talking to you about it. And then they were surprised. Then Jesus explained more things to them. What he said, but the comforter, and he explained about the comforter. He said, I go to my father and I will send you the comforter. I will go to my father, I will send you the paraclete. I will go to my Father, I will send you the Holy Spirit. I will go to my Father, I will send you the Holy Ghost. When I go to my Father, I will send you the Spirit of God. When all these things Jesus said, he explains to the disciples and the people, those who heard him, and today he's explaining to me and you. What is he saying? But the Comforter, which the Holy Ghost, he says the Comforter is no more but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. We are praying and we are trying to bring one servant of God here. Asking him to come here for us to give us the word of God. To conduct same like how Paul Darson was the last preacher who visited our church. 
much more mightier than him. Power of God moves through him. The Holy Spirit of God moves through him. And you must have seen the clip. I will also, in the coming days, we will try to show the clips. And he is really anointed one. So much of anointing is there. And how he moves, how he talks about the Holy Spirit, it will encourage your life. We are trying to bring the servant of God. Still nothing is working out. And we are trying. The Bible clearly says, the whom we can, we are learning from the other person. But the Bible says, Jesus told the disciples, when the Holy Spirit of God is come to you, he will teach you all, all things. things. What are the all things? Things of the world, things of God, things of heaven, things of earth. Nobody will teach you of things of heaven, but the Holy Spirit of God will teach you about the kingdom of heaven. The Spirit of God will teach you that this life is short and one day we have to pass away from this life. The Holy Spirit of God will teach you death is going to come, but do not be afraid. After the death, you have to enter into the kingdom of God. Many people will say that death is coming, finished. That is the end of our life. No. Death is the gateway that we are entering into another life where we'll be living forever and ever. That is the kingdom of heaven. If the people do not go to the kingdom of heaven, then the people will go to the kingdom of hell. And that is also kingdom of devil. Therefore, it is called the kingdom of hell. And when you go, or when our soul goes to the kingdom of hell, there will be certain times, and then our souls will be totally burnt. Be aware about it. Be aware about it. And therefore, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit of God will teach you all things and... Bring all things to your remembrance. Everything he will bring unto you to your remembrance. Today, you may not be holding the Bible, but when I'm speaking, you might be hearing so many other words or remembering so many other words. And he is not, you are not remembering because you have an intellectual mind. No, you are hearing and remembering because you know that the Holy Spirit of God is teaching you. The Bible clearly says in John chapter 15, verse 25 and 26. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. Jesus was speaking that let this be done, that I shall be crucified on the cross. I shall be paying the penalty of the entire world. Their sin, curse, sicknesses, and untimely death, I'll be paying. And therefore he said, but this cometh to pass, this will pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. What is written in the law that should be done? Law says that when you sin, you have to pay the penalty of death. If a man and woman sin, they have to pay the penalty of death. Me or you or anybody. But we don't die because Jesus became sin and he paid the penalty according to the law, death. He paid the penalty of your law that was supposed to be on you, your punishment that was supposed to be on you, my punishment that was supposed to be on me, sin and death. But Jesus took the sin on him, therefore he died early. At the age of 33, and some theologians say 33 and a half. The Bible clearly says, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled. That is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. They hated Jesus Christ without a cause. And it's happening in the world. Christians are hated because without the cause. Because they first hated Jesus Christ, they will hate you also. They persecuted Jesus Christ, they will persecute you also. And persecution, when it comes to Christian, he cannot overcome the persecution without the Holy Spirit of God. No Christian man, Christian woman can overcome the persecution except the persecution unless and until he or she has the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit power working in him or in her. Verse 26 says, But when the Comforter is come, But when the Comforter is come, When the Holy Ghost is come, The Comforter, the Holy Ghost is come, Whom? I will send unto you from the Father. I will send you. Jesus said, I will send you from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth. That is the Spirit of truth. Spirit of truth is according to the Word of God. Which proceeded from the Father. Which is coming from the Father. Which is coming, proceeded from the Father. He, he shall, shall testify of me. When the Holy Spirit comes, you don't say, I am strong. You don't say, I am casting out demons. You don't say, I can prophesy. Come on, here, I can prophesy. Nobody can say that. Because the, when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit gives you the prophetic word. The Holy Spirit delivers you. The Holy Spirit of God has power to deliver the people. Those are demon possessed, Satan possessed, evil possessed, evil practices, evil habits. You cannot deliver yourself. Therefore, the Holy Spirit has a power to deliver that man who has a power of evil in him or in her. The Bible clearly says, 
again but when the, the comforter is come comforter means the holy ghost and the holy spirit okay whom i will send unto you from the father jesus said i will send it to you from the father even the spirit of truth even the spirit of truth the word of god the holy spirit which is the true things and then which, which proceeded from the father he which comes from the father he shall testify of me he shall testify when you receive the holy spirit of god you don't talk about yourself you don't talk about yourself you testify about jesus that jesus has empowered me with the holy ghost and i'm able to deliver the people jesus has empowered me with the holy spirit of god and i'm able to prophesy not that i prophesy i deliver i heal i will deliver i will heal no not at all it is we when we receive the holy spirit of god we testify about jesus christ of nazareth how jesus came down to this earth how jesus died on the cross of calvary how jesus washed you and washed me how we were far away from jesus and worshiping all of the god saying all god is same but then we understood the truth only jesus died for us on the cross of calvary only jesus took away our sins and paid the penalty of our death only jesus took away every manner of sin curse sicknesses and penalty of death and died for us nobody else and then our faith changes our understanding changes our teachings and living style changes we start putting our faith only in jesus because jesus has paid the penalty of our sin curse and sicknesses and death and nobody else if you say all is god all is same all god is one then you don't have understanding about god at all i was talking to you last week that it was talking and it was the subject about the resurrection that people were talking about the resurrection of jesus christ our lord and jesus came down after the resurrection to meet the people those who were still talking about jesus christ and nazareth how good man he was and they killed him on the cross how good man he was that they buried in the borrowed tomb how good man he was but the roman soldiers sealed his tomb with a stone and jesus came and talked about whom you are talking about what you are talking they said we are talking about that good man who died on the cross of calvary and when jesus went on talking to them they were surprised that it was nobody else with her, with them but jesus christ of nazareth martha mary mother of joseph mary the mother of joseph and the other mary, mary magdalene when they went to the sepulcher or sepulcher they found the sepulcher was open there was nobody there they only found the linen cloth and they were asking where is our lord and the angel spoke to them don't you remember that god told you that he will not be here he will be risen again what are you searching for and therefore today that day we had a, a remembrance of that resurrection that our faith and our belief should be increased that jesus is alive anybody who is worshiping idol is not believing the resurrection of jesus not at all not at all you may say no i believe in jesus i believe that he is resurrected but then you cannot have the idol idol and resurrection does not go together that's what i was talking to you last week and you have to remember this is what the bible say then you know about the holy spirit you know about the resurrection but the truth is not known to you truth is not understood to you still you are in the religion and traditional practices the bible says but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth the spirit of truth should be able to understand and the bible clearly says which proceeded from the father he shall testify of me the testimony of jesus of resurrection should be there in you the resurrection of jesus christ before the resurrection the death of jesus the sacrifice of jesus the penalty of jesus taking the sins of the world upon him dying for the world dying for the people to set them free from sin curse sicknesses and death how come christian can be sick when somebody dies for them because they don't believe how christian can be still dying early in young age and say that our son died our wife died our so and so died they were very young how you can happen when somebody paid the penalty of death on the cross was buried in the tomb rose again on the third day and some of us are dying early how it is possible truth is not there truth is not understood not following the truth still following the religion and we feel that when we follow religion we are perfect i am doing right but we are not doing right because we are not understood what the holy spirit of god is teaching you what the truth is teaching you what the word of god is teaching you you have not understood neither i have understood tonight therefore 
remember the first day of preparation. This is just an introduction subject in regards to the three days of fasting and prayer. Revive us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Very important, very, very important. Pray that you shall be revived with the Holy Spirit. Pray that your mind shall be revived with the Holy Spirit. Pray that your soul shall be revived with the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Holy Spirit of God that is in you shall be revived and you shall be able to know the truth and you shall be able to follow the truth and the Lord will bless you. Tonight, the word of God is very clear to you and unto me. All the scriptures that we read, it's an introduction or introductory teachings or introductory subject in regards to the revivals, uh, revival of the Holy Spirit of God. And that too, revival of the fire is going to start the very next subject. Because of the fire, you shall be able to understand. And that is what I want to tell you, that when Moses came and Moses looked unto God and he said, what shall I do? My people are crying and telling me, you brought us to dead end. You brought us to be killed by Pharaoh and his, his all the armies. You brought us to be drowned in the water. There is no way in front of us is the water. Either we should get drowned and die in the water or whether we should be killed by the Pharaoh and Pharaoh's army. Moses, what is this that you have done in our lives? Moses calls out the fire. And the fire came and stood there as a pillar of fire. And all the people of Israel were surprised. Fire and the Pharaoh's army standing behind the fire. This side is the Red Sea. And then Moses opens the Red Sea by the power of the Holy Spirit. My brothers, my sister, there the fire of the Holy Spirit begins and gives you the understanding. And one more scripture I want to give you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Then we are going to go deeper in tomorrow's subject, tomorrow night, online prayer in night vigil, starting at 10 o'clock in the same hall. And we are going to continue this subject till Friday. And all of us must be revived, revived by the Holy Spirit and revived by the fire. Are you all ready? Yes. Let's read the word of God. Final words. Hebrews mm. chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. We are going to receive that kingdom which cannot be moved. The kingdom of hell is also there which is hold or held and or which is held by Satan. But that is going to be moved. What is the meaning of moving? It means it's going to be destroyed by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit by burning fire and it will be totally burned. That will be the last judgment of Satan, burning in the hell fire, along with all the souls, those will go and fall there. Completely it will be gone. But the kingdom of heaven will remain forever and ever. You should know where your feet are going. God is always asking a question in the Old Testament. Choose what you want. If you want life, choose. And so also openly God said, if you want death, that also you choose. People, those who are in religious practices, unknowingly they are choosing death. But people, those who are following the truth through the word of God and by the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God, they are following the truth, which is about the kingdom of heaven and righteousness. And they are choosing kingdom of heaven. The Bible says, wherefore we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God. Acceptably with reverence, and godly fear. Let us have that grace to serve God with a godly fear and godly reverence. Let us have fear of God, not fear of society, not fear of religion, not fear of religion leader, not fear of any, you know, political leader, not fear of parents, brothers, sisters, those who don't believe in the truth, not of them, but of God alone. And the Bible clearly says, verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. The Bible clearly says, for our God is a Con consuming fire. The Bible refers, and this is the reference that I wanted to start with, about the consuming fire. That our God is a consuming fire. That fire started when God told Moses, Moses put fire there, so they cannot reach unto you. The devil cannot reach, the, the enemy cannot reach unto my people, and Moses did the same thing. And the pillar of fire was standing and stopping Pharaoh and all his army, powerful chariots, powerful soldiers, cannot pass through that fiery wall. And then Moses opened the Red Sea. 
and the red sea was opened because of god's power of the holy spirit in him and the people of israel walked through that red sea passed after that the fire went away and the red sea was covered again understand our god is a consuming fire our subject begins from today and it will continue tomorrow night and friday that revivers learn with the holy spirit and today fire. first introduction tomorrow second message and day after tomorrow third message in this third message our life shall be changed say amen, amen. we shall be revived with the holy spirit amen we shall be revived with the power of god amen we shall be revived with the holy ghost amen we shall be revived with the fire of god amen and we all shall be blessed are you ready yes amen The Holy Spirit of God shall touch him. Lord. It shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. It shall be the power of God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Touch him with the power of God. The power of the Lord shall touch him. Keep your hand here. It shall be the power of God. It shall be the fire of the Lord. The poor shall be blessed. They shall become parents. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Fire of God. The Holy Power of God, the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, Ramari, 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 Kaba, da la la la. Oh, Kaba, ba 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 ba. Oh, Kaba, ba 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 ba. Oh, Ramari, 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 Kaba, da la la la. In the name of Jesus, it shall be the power of the Lord. It shall be the power of God. Power of the Holy Ghost shall bless them and touch them. Power of the Holy Ghost shall revive them and strengthen them. It shall be the power of the Holy Ghost. God is reviving your mind, soul, spirit, and body with the power of the Holy Ghost. You will be revived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Power of the Holy Ghost. 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 Bend up, bend up, sister. Bend up. एक दावन मत रहा शुक्र गुजारो बहन के लिए शैतान का हर काम छोड़ देता हूँ. Yes, अंगार डाल अपनी अंगार डाल. शैतान के हर काम को जला दे शैतान के हर काम को जला दे बेटे के आशीष दे बेटे के आशीष दे बेटे के आशीष दे जो के उनको बेबी दी है वो लड़का होने दे इस मुझे के नाम से घर में खानदान में बरकत दे आपका नाम रोशन करे शैतान के हर काम को छोड़ देता हूँ जो के दर्द जो के पेन जो के तकलीफ आती है सारे तकलीफों को साफ कर निकाल दे इस मसीह के लोहों से साफ करता हूँ। Yes, बच्चा मुंह हो रहा है, बच्चा मुंह हो रहा है। आपके पेट में बच्चा घूम रहा है, जल रहा है, इधर उधर चल रहा है। इस मसीह के नाम से, ये जो है, ये प्रभु की आत्मा से, प्रभु के रूह से हो रही है। Receive in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. The blood of Jesus. Yes, के लोहों से आप अच्छे रहेंगे, अच्छे लड़के को � Good business, good future, everything shall come because of the Holy Spirit of God. They shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. They shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. They shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. Life shall be totally changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, the power of God shall be upon us. This shall be the holy touch of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I could have one barkat day. Shanti day, Samadan day. खुश रख मेरे बहन को हमेशा खुश रख आप हमेशा खुश रहेगी सारी बरकत ऐश मसी देगा थैंक यू जीसस चचर विद द पावर ऑफ द लॉर्ड और पावर ऑफ लाख से सब भी खुश हैं बट आई कैन द जबर सब भी काम द होल्स ऑफ गॉड विल कीप यू हेल्थी द होल्स ऑफ गॉड विल कीप यू हेल्थी नो सिक्नेसेस नो पावर ऑफ लाख से नथिंग शल वर्क अगेंस्ट the Holy Spirit of God shall give you everything that is needed. The Holy Spirit of God is strengthening you today. You will be successful. Jesus, my name. 
the holy anointing of God shall bless you. The holy power of God shall touch you. The anointing of God shall restore you. The holy anointing of God shall bless you. The revival power of God shall revive you. Strengthen and bless you. The demonic power shall be broken. Use wisdom, knowledge, and you shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's anointing shall come upon you. The holes of God shall touch you. They shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. They shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. The Lord shall bless you. The touch of the Holy Ghost. The power of God. The power of the Holy Ghost shall heal you and bless you. They shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. Life shall be totally changed. Jesus might give you. The Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost will give you power. You will be able to overcome. In Jesus' mighty name. The Holy Ghost power shall heal you and bless you. The whole blood of God shall touch you. In the name of Jesus, everything shall be changed. The Holy Spirit of God shall be my God. The victory and the success shall come. Because of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. The whole of God shall be my God. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Touch of the Holy Ghost shall change you. This shall be the touch of the Holy Spirit of God. This shall be the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost shall change you. The Holy Spirit of God shall change you and bless you. Shall be a change in your life. Satan shall be defeated. Demon shall be defeated. All demonic calls shall go to the lake of fire. All magic works shall go to the lake of fire. Total healing and total deliverance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God shall touch you. The Holy Spirit of God shall revive you. The Holy Spirit of God shall bless you. The Holy Spirit of God shall bless them. Give them wisdom and knowledge. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. A revival fire. A revival of mind and Holy Spirit shall take you. They shall be the fire of the Lord. Oh, Rabba, Riba, Ba, Riba, Ba, Rikha, Ba, Dalara. It shall be the revival fire. Revival fire. Revival fire. What of God will be remembered. Always be remembered. Thank you, Jesus. Touch with the power of God. Bless her with the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God shall touch you. Revival power of God shall revive you. It shall be the strength of the Holy Ghost. Power of God. Power of God. The running of God, the touch of the Holy Ghost, nothing shall be changed. Oh, Rabari, Babari, Babari, Sabadalara, words of God shall touch you. Shall be the touch of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, my today. Thank you, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost revive you. It's entire family by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Power of God. Shall be the Holy Power of God. It shall be the Holy Power of God. Shall be the Power of God. Jesus, my today. Oh, yeah. 